Looks like everybody's here. All right, so hi, my name is Mr. Lehman. I'm doing a little bit of a guest kind of demo teaching spot today here at Realm. Uh, a little bit about me, I've been teaching for, oh my gosh, I used to say almost 15 years. I'm almost at the 20 year mark of teaching. Um, I teach a wide variety of stuff, primarily history, but I also went to school for biology. I also teach a class on Dungeons and Dragons to kids and stuff like that. So if you're like, oh my gosh, what does Mr. Lehman teach? There's a big list. Um, I haven't taught an, a live in-person class in a little while, and usually my class sizes these days are around five because I do independent kind of teaching stuff, but brought in my old sign from my old classroom. This is my questions later, questions now sign. I'm going to flip this sign every like five-ish minutes so you know when I'm ready to take questions. I'm going to tell you right now, some of you have had me for class four. Show up, raise hands who's had me in an actual class. Oh, like well, you've had, you know, okay, yeah, yeah, we had class Tuesday. Um, <laughs> so... I don't have this in my little home office space because there's only three of you, but uh, typically when I teach, you've probably noticed that, hey, I'm talking about something and you might be like, I have a question. There's a 90% chance I'm going to answer it, like in the teaching part. So just, well, just write it down. If you're like, oh, I got a question, just write it down. And if I answer it by teaching, cool. And if not, I'll flip the sign. I'll take questions at this point. Awesome, because we haven't really like dipped in anything deep yet, so I'm super cool with that. All right, so by the end of this class, which is written on the board, you'll be able to do two things. You'll be able to list four of the five uses of control and fire, and you'll be able to explain how fire is still helping us today. <laughs> All right, so we're going to learn five things. Okay, so fire is one of people's earliest inventions, or at least the control of it. Obviously, a lightning bolt comes out from the sky, strikes some dry grass, whoo, fire. It's not like somebody was like, hmm. How do I invent fire? But it's the control part of fire that we're talking about. So what is one way that people control fire? Give you a hit. Lights. Lights, there you go, light. Okay, cool. So you live on this planet, it's going around the sun, 12 hours out of the day, it's dark. You can't see what you're doing. How often do people, how much time do people usually spend sleeping? Nine to eight hours. Nine to eight hours. So you've got a chunk of your day where it is not light. So fire allows you to have light. I'm gonna write these down, that's cool. If not, it's cool too. <laughs> so fire allows you to like light things. That way you can go home and you're not like, ah oh, man, it's dark. I guess I'll just go to sleep. No, you can continue to work or continue to do stuff or craft or invent or like spend time with people or like hang out with your friends. Awesome, you get more time in your day where you can actually see what you're doing. Okay, so the First, one of the major things that fire does is it allows you to control light. Great, you could spend more time working, we could spend more time doing anything that we want. We have control over our environment. It's not just lights off, lights on. Yesterday there was a couple of power outages. Did that affect everybody yeah. at all? Right, so you can't really do stuff when the power's out. You can do a lot more when the power is on. In this case, the power is, uh. well, like, Light. Power is light. There you go. Cool. All right. Awesome. All right. So the first thing we can do when we talk about controlling fire is controlling our sources of light. Second thing we get to control is what's that thing that fire is? And if you touch it, you go ah like that. What do you heat. got? Heat. Heat. Awesome. So heat allows us to be not cold. Uh, most other organisms are kind of limited in their geography because they can't travel around where it's too hot or it's too cold. Fire allows us to expand into areas that are normally colder. I know you live in Los Angeles. I had lived in my apartment for eight years. I do not know how to turn the heat on because <laughs> I've never had to. I'm from a place called Frostburg. They don't call it Warmopolis. It's Frostburg. It's got the frost in the title of the town. So because I lived in Frostburg, you have to control the heat a lot more. This allows you to have more heat. Cool. That way we can move into new places. And humans know to expand and explore and get new stuff and not be right next to each other. That's why all your desks are separated. That's why every time you go on an airplane and there's those three seats and you're by the window and somebody's on the aisle, you're like, please, nobody sit in the middle seat. Please, 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 please. please. <laughs> Cause you want that space. Mm -hmm. Having more heat allows us to move into new areas and have more space so that we can kind of like, yeah. get, want to be all up on everybody all the time. So you want to have a sibling that they share a room with? Oh. How's that experience? First right there and then right there. Yeah. How's that experience? Uh, messy. Messy? How's that experience? Sometimes it can be annoying. Because there's a little bit of friction? Yes, 
And right. Sometimes, like, my brother takes all the covers. Yeah. Oh, because your brother is taking all of the... Space. <laughs> what is your the covers that you? cause you to be oh, right there you go so like there so if you have more control over your heat you're not so much worried about someone stealing your covers and you get a little more wiggle room so there's not so much of a mess the questions at this point about heat and light two basic things fire does fire hot and ooh, bright <laughs> cool all right let's get something a little more complicated Oh, yes, right there. Are we going to talk about more modern uses of fire? Because these are things that don't affect us anyway. Right. We started doing this about a million years ago. Uh, that's probably like our earliest versions of campfires. To be fair, we don't find a lot of archaeological evidence of like stuff that's over about 40,000 years ago. But about a million years ago, some of the earliest things we do get are campfires. Uh, you're still using this one? Yes. And you're still using that one? But not with fire. Basically, this is an electrified gas. This is fire. It is. Yeah. yeah. This is this. These are fluorescent lights. It's a tube full of gas and has electricity, electricity <coughs> running through it, which causes it to be charged. All fire is is basically charged gas that's just exploding, smallly, but that's what it's doing. The sun is a bigger version of that. Sun being a, as my physics kids say, a semi-permanent explosion. Well, what so. happens when you touch a light bulb? It's hot. Yeah. Right, exactly. Go. Hot. Yeah. yeah. Those of you who work in theater, you will notice that you will stop having fingerprints if you do not make sure you have <laughs> gloves when you touch the theater lights because they You'll burn your fingerprints right off. Yeah. So, it's my hands are a little less fingerprinted than they usually are. Um, but yeah, we still use lights from fire, which is this is what this is. We still use heat, it's what a boiler room is. Uh, what boils all the. If you have heat, it's going to, like for fire, that's what most things that are heating are. They're like they're generating some kind of electrified energy. They're excited particles is basically what fire is. Mm -hmm. So when we're doing that in something like a metal or like water. You're still you're still generating that friction or heat to create not necessarily a giant bonfire in your in your living room, but the effect is very similar. Right, so we'll move on a little bit. All right, our third thing we're going to talk about. We're going to get a little deeper in this. Is protection. You can control protection. Uh, turns out animals don't really like it when you go, ah, ah, with fire. Neither does <laughs> Frankenstein. Frankenstein's not into that either. So animals do not like it when there is fire. If, they could, if you're camping and you're like, oh my gosh, are there bears? A good way to make sure that if there are bears, they don't come in your camp and go, nom, 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 all your food. And then, oh, what's in this tent? A sleeping person. Have a fire. Campfire, helpful. So protects you from animals. Also, it creates this thing. You know, so you can see animals in the dark. Typically, animals that hunt things do it at night, so you can't see. But if you control the light, because you have fire, you can be like, ah, with the fire. And also you can, oh, I see there's a bear. Get out of here. You can hold that stuff up. So you get a little more protection. Um, ancient people, if we're talking about your first invention is the control of fire, it's not like you're sitting around inventing a bunch of iPods or something like this, right? You are barely at the point where you have, like, rope. So at this point, you don't really have housing. What's something that ancient people probably lived in? Tents. There you go, cave, right there. Cave, great. You don't have to build it, you just walk right in. Great, so if there's something in there, I can see it, because I have light, and if something's in there that's super scary, I'm going to be protected from it, because it's not going to want to hang around a bunch of fire, because animals understand fire hot. For an experiment at home, uh, please don't touch the stove, so because fire hot. But yeah, protection works really well. Um... That's all I should have to say about protection. But I'll take questions at this point. We still using fire to protect ourselves and people? Uh, Probably not as much, but if you go camping, eh. You go camping, it wouldn't, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be the worst idea in the world to have like a campfire so you can see if there's a bear or the bear sees you and goes, oh, good. There's a question right there from my guy? I just wanted to comment that sure. it also smells kind of bad. The fire smells bad? <laughs> Like, what? I, I mean, if you're like right in where the smoke is, it can be kind of yeah, choking. Yeah, I mean. fire smells bad. Do you know what's a thing that doesn't, that really doesn't like that fire smoke? Mosquitoes. Bees. Mosquitoes, yes, but there's another one that starts with a bee. Somebody said it. Right there. Bees. Bees, right. So you can go harvest their honey. You smoke a bee's hive with, with fire or the smoke part. You're not trying to burn the bees, but the smoke gets into their, into their like bodies. Bees don't have lungs. Bees absorb 
air by they have holes in the side of them. Most insects just have air blowing through them. Like if you wind down all the windows in your car, just wind blows through it. That's how an insect works. So bees just have smoke in them and they're like, ooh, whoa, wait a minute, this is not oxygen. So they get all calm, so we can go in there and be like, yoink, and take their honey. Uh, Great. So they also protect the uh, From like a not having enough oxygen, yes. You, if you like hold your breath, you'll get like kind of lightheaded after a while. That's what that sensation for them is. And they're like, ooh, ooh. They get kind of fainty. So that way they're not all like, sting, 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 sting. They're more like, wait a minute. You can just <laughs> so we do that with bees. Okay, come on. All right, uh, the fourth one is a little more complicated. Tools. Now, normally when people do this, they go, oh, I've played Minecraft. Or I've played, if you believe my older students, I've played World of Warcraft. Where, like, you melt things at a... Yeah, furnace. we're smiling. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I don't, I don't no, but you know, somebody said furnace. Yeah. Okay, a furnace, which uses what? Fire. There you go, cool. So if you have a controlled fire, you can figure out what kind of temperature you want. If you make the metal too hot, it won't work as well. If you don't make it hot enough, you can't bend it. And I kind of like my metal to be a little bendy bendy so I can bend it into shapes. But this one even goes beyond that. If you are, if you just build a house out of wood, termites are going to be like, mmm, a delicious house. And they'll come by and they'll start munching away on it. But if you fire treat your house, which means you just take the wood, you kind of just kind of roast it like a marshmallow. Not the part where you like set it on fire and you're like, mm, not that one, but like, it's still a little roasty roasty. So you get all the water out of it. Insects don't want it anymore. So they're not gonna eat your house. It's called fire hardening. You know that with arrows or spears or anything made of wood. And wood is all over the place. It literally grows on trees. So if you want a bunch of tools to last, you fire harden them. So this helps make more wooden tools. Makes your spear last years instead of like a week. But I know right there you're talking about I'm gonna melt metal. Yeah. Yeah. This also is a thing that's accidental. So anyone actually going camping? Picture of raised hands. So camping. Oh my gosh, a lot of people. So when you're gonna start a fire, what well, you just start it randomly, or do you make a little what? Circle. Out of what? Uh, Rocks. Rocks. Rocks, right? Wood. Okay. No, you do the wood. You well, you, you put the wood in there, yeah. But you make them out of rocks. Okay, so you make a little circle out of rocks. Okay. So you got your campfire going on. Please excuse the primitive art. I'm not drawing a bracelet. You're drawing a campfire. Okay, cool. So we got our campfire. This is my ring of rocks. So the fire doesn't go like this. Ah, it doesn't go all crazy. And then, like you know, like burn down all of Montana, which would be bad. No. So you got your fire in here. <laughs> I picked Montana for a reason. I would be okay. Right? Yeah, I remember. I so you got your fire going. You got your fire going in here. Cool. So now as my fire controlled, another side effect happens. People started going, oh, some of these rocks. Next day, the rock changes from this into this. And there's this like weird puddle on the ground. <laughs> Copper. Someone peed on the rocks. What? Madness! No. <laughs> but you melted copper out of the rock. So this is a, if you heat up the rocks enough, the copper will melt out. Copper is a metal and you can make it into all kinds of shapes. And I do not have time today to go on and on about how metal is awesome because it is. And students that have already had me, you've had the metal lesson. We're not going there. Spoiler alert, metal is metal's awesome. <laughs> they know that. Keep it together, Mr. Lamer. We're not talking about metal today. But you get copper out of that, too. And you can make copper into a tool. Penny. Well, yes. <laughs> which is, actually, that would be a form of a tool. Because yep. you're using currency as a tool, so you don't have to be like, oh, trade you a chicken for, like, a bunch of rice. Uh, right. You want to use currency. So here you get metal. All right. Cool. I'll take questions at this point. I have the accidentally discovered metal. And being like, I don't want the fire to burn everything. Oh, whoops, also metal. Yes, right there. Can the fire also like burn on your house? Well, if you don't control it, yeah. But that's what our <laughs> that's kind of where we're at. We're at that talking about controlling a fire. Not like again, I don't want to burn down all of Montana. So that's why I build this Can ring be, of stones around. Why not? And it's also pretty uh, hard to burn it seems down. Seems like a cave. beam. That's fair. <laughs> it's hard to burn down a cave. Yeah. Yes. Uh, when you're fire hardening or whatever it's mm -hmm. called, um, then 
how like how do you prevent the wood from burning? Same way that if you're making like a steak or you're like cooking or like you're going to bake a bunch of cookies, you pick the cookies for like 13, 15 minutes. You don't go, well, I'm going to turn this up to 500 degrees and I'm going to just leave that in there for seven hours. No, no, you, you go 350 for like 14 minutes. You just don't cook it as much. But, and, but on the other hand, doesn't it make the wood more vulnerable to fire? Because dry wood yeah. So. If the wood is probably going to catch anyway once it's no longer growing, like dead wood tends to catch on fire anyway. But if you're fire hardening it and you're just talking about like the the handle for a hammer or something like that, you're not going to be like that's probably not going to be. If the fire is so out of control that it's burning all of your tools that you've already fire hardened, just leave. Like it's already <laughs> at that point. It's, it's like right. I mean like. But in general, you want that stuff so that insects don't come along and eat it if it's your house. If your house is on fire, there's not a whole lot I can do about it, but at least it's not on fire or being eaten by insects. At least it's one or the other. And I can at least prevent the insect part. Yes? If um, the insects are eating the house while it's on fire, are oh, well. the insects no longer a problem? Yeah, right, but I still <laughs> so don't have a house. <laughs> <laughs> if the insects are ever eating your house, you start a fire. If, well, I would probably just call someone to spray poison on them with their metal tools. <laughs> yes? What about glass? Uh, glass. glass, also, you can make in the same kind of way. Glass is usually, especially in the ancient world, is made out of, like, sand, um, which you're not usually going to use to contain something like this, but people that live near communities where there is more sand, specifically Egypt, specifically ancient Sumeria, uh, Native American populations as well that live near the coast, they have more access to sand, They do you do see more of a development of glass. Yes. But I'm not usually using glass as like a hammer. Unless it's the most solid object that I have, then I'll just go with whatever the hardest object I have is. And if it's a big ball full of molten glass that's just in some shape, fine. Yes? Um, how did they heat up the glass? Uh, how did they heat up the sand so well to make the glass? So, a lot of times... Like the in, in back the Asian world, yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of times, your how you melt or discover metal is by how hot the thing you make is. Uh, something like copper has a much lower melting point than something like iron or gold. So the hotter something is, the m kind of the more energy you get. Uh, a lot of ancient glass is actually lightning strikes. Sometimes this is called ghost-touched glass or fulmerite, which is where a lightning bolt hits the sand and it makes this weird like lightning bolt shaped glass thing. Whoa. So a lot of times they would just collect those and then just heat them and now you just have, you can just make glass. If you carve into sand or clay or mud or a piece of wood or something like that, a shape, you can just pour the glass in there and it'll just make the shape. Um, wait, liquid glass? Yeah, just liquefy it. Wait, so you just lick, wait, can you, you lick, so you just liquefy sand, yeah. and then it turns into glass? Yes. If it's the right consistency yeah. of sand, yes. And you sand cast it. Yeah, you can sand cast it, you can pour it into like, you can get some clay, which you can again, if I've got pottery, if I've got a pot, I want to put it in a kiln, which is going to use fire. fire, right? So then I'm going to have more of an ability to melt that glass and make more tools. And now I have glass tools. And now I have pottery that also won't absorb water as well. You have to glaze it. But yes, yes, I Isn't sand just crushed rocks? So if Most of the planet is crushed rocks. So, well, I mean, yes. if we heated up a rock, would it make it last? Not every rock will have that effect, but it depends on how much silica is in there versus how much quartz is in there. Not all sand is uniform. Some sand is just like so a bunch you, of tiny crushed up shells. So if you melt sand, there's probably going to be some rocks in it. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's why if you use glass like this, it's got this gritty texture. And so if you're good at making glass, you're good at filtering out all the grit that would go into something like a window. Which is why we don't usually use sand for that anymore. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about, I sort of mentioned, which is cooking. Yay. Who said yay for cooking? Yay. Guess what? Me too. <laughs> I love the part where I eat food and it's not full of bacteria or parasites. Awesome. Go Termites. fire, because fire is really good at getting rid of bacteria and parasites, which make people sick. So number one, this is better for your health. So that when you're cooking, you stay healthy. Oh my gosh, I love being healthy. It's the best. And I love not being full of parasitic flatworms. 
Yay! Yay! And I love not like, you know, vomiting until I die because I got bacteria from eating some bad food. Are you sure? That's a thing. That sounds really, really, really fun. As a historian that has seen a lot of like, oh, when did we start treating our food better? Yeah. Like, there is an immediate break of like, oh, this. It's like, because a lot of people in the past, you drink out of the wrong stream, you just die. But this is a good way to make sure that you can boil all the parasites or bacteria or insects or larvae or whatever out of your water and to make sure that if you've got a piece of meat, it doesn't have any parasites in it. It's also another reason why cooking is really important. Uh, so you guys just had lunch, right? I assume. Okay. How long did it take you to eat your lunch? Just Zero. 20 minutes. Okay, great. So you didn't have to sit there all day going... <laughs> If you cook your food, it gets softer, meaning that you do not have to have massive giant jaw muscles to crush up all your food, like a gorilla or most primates have very large jaws because they don't cook their food, they eat their food raw. And yes, since I've been teaching out in California, I'm very aware that there's this raw food diet kind of thing. And yes, you technically get more nutrients if you just don't cook a carrot as opposed to you cook a <laughs> carrot but I can eat way more carrots if they're cooked. So it kind of invalidates the point, especially when it's like, my job isn't sit quietly at a computer. It's like chase a gazelle for 37 miles until it lays down, <laughs> which is usually how we used to hunt things. It wasn't with a bow and arrow. It was just follow it like a zombie. So like, yes, I'm going to want stuff cooked so I get as much calories as I can get, which is also going to reduce my jaw size. Smaller jaw, bigger brain. Because your head's only going to be so big. You're going to have this big giant head. So, if my head real estate has less jaw muscle in it and more brain in it, I can do that thinky thing more where the thoughts happen and ideas occur, which is, you know, this. So I want to be smarter, so that's going to help your brain size in terms of your head. So brain size. Now, I remember way back in the day when I taught this, because I haven't taught this lesson in years, but somebody went, hey, wait a minute. A big brain is not the most awesome thing ever, Mr. Layman. And I said, oh. And they went, right. My brain's not as big as like a whale. Like a big giant blue whale, biggest thing that ever lived. Huge giant brain. Are you saying that a whale is smarter than me? No. What I'm saying is, is that in terms of your head real estate, there's kind of two things I want. I want my brain to be big, but I also want my brain to be full of awesome firing neurons that make my thinking parts happen good. So if your brain size is going up and your nutritional output is also better because you've cooked your food and you're not full of parasites, then your brain, in terms of your neurons, is able to better like, make those connections and you're basically smarter. So this helped us be smart to invent literally everything. Because <laughs> if I'm talking about how this is our first invention is just controlling fire, it's super helpful that we can think about other stuff that's not fire, you know, like rope or not have to live in a cave, or glass, or what the glass should be in the shape of. Or like, hey, if I've got a hammer, maybe I'll invent some nails. Well, there you go. So then you start getting this ball rolling of, oh, I can think about new cool stuff. Also, I have more spare time to do it because I'm not spending hours every day going like this. If you go to the zoo and you watch the animals eat, it takes forever for them to eat. It's literally how we used to chase all the gazelles and stuff. They run much faster than we do, but they have to spend a lot of time chewing. We just literally just outrun them by just walking behind them and just wait for them to pass out. <laughs> right, and since we can coordinate that, I can work with my friend. Like, I follow him for four hours, and then you take over, and we'll just go in a big circle until it gets tired, and then we go over and go, thunk. And then we cook all the parasites out, and we have an awesome barbecue, right? On our super controlled fire, and then we accidentally make some copper. Awesome, great, we get all this cool stuff. Take questions at this point. Yes? Your thinking thing must have an amazing vocabulary. Oh my gosh, it's like pretty good yeah. in terms of its goodness and its <laughs> think ability. <Excellent. laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, there's another question. I'm sorry, you're right there. Yes, sir. Uh, can't fire also be used as cauterization? Is that something that people did when they were first inventing? Not their most immediate thing. Um, cauterization is where you take something that's hot and you, you burn a wound with it. Um, that is good for getting rid of things like bacteria. Uh, in the past, you're like getting an infection from something like a splinter is much higher. 
So you're not as worried about your wound prevention or like blood loss. I mean, this is way before people understood the concept of your blood moves through you in like veins. Like that, that concept's only maybe five or 600 years old. People used to think you're just like a sponge with just blood in it. Or just like, oh, you're like a sack that has blood. So uh, people weren't really like, oh, I should cauterize my wounds. It's like, so that wasn't on their, on their forefront was medical technology. But the fact that you can think about that is because of cooking. All right, so I erased them off the board, and even all my crazy notes about fire, or I bristled with fire in the middle of it, depending on what you saw. So, <laughs> in this class, I said you'd be able to list four of the five uses of fire. You can name four. Show of hands. Okay. You look at all them, and you're like, wait a minute. Me too? What's one? Give me one. Uh, light. Light. Awesome. What's another one? Um, heat. Heat's cool. Heat. Uh, heat cool. Uh, no. Okay, yes, right there. <laughs> One more? Tool. Tool use, yes. What's another one? Cooking. Cooking. Cool. What's another one? Projection. Great. Okay. So how does how is some of that still helping us today? And I'm going right here. Because we're talking about modern uses. What? How is one of those ones you just described still helping us today, right now in the year 2023? Cooking. Cooking. How is that still helping? It's still good for the bacteria and food. And also what? Starts with a P. Ends with an aerocytes. And it gets rid of parasites. There you go. Cool. What's another one? Uh uh, heat. We use the lights, and we. Oh, okay. But the how does heat? Okay, how does heat help us right now? <coughs> heat helps us by using the heater. So that we're not cold. Right. Okay. Great. Right. So maybe you can sleep better, or like me, you're like, oh, no, turn the fan on. Yeah, it's I, like, I agree. I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. What's another one right there? Uh, back to cooking. It also helps because we're more focused on luxury now versus Ooh. basic survival. It makes things taste better. I mm. super enjoy being focused on luxury. I do not want to spend several hours a day just chewing. Yes, right there. Tools. Tools, cool. Like what? Like a hammer. Like a hammer made of glass. usually two objects. <laughs> yeah, the wood that I glass. kind of put in a. Uh, glass. I took the wood and I put it in a fire, right? And the metal part of the hammer. Right, okay, great. So you've taught me how fire is still helping us right now. You've listed all the cool things we do with fire. But also the smell. Also the smell, because bees. So yeah, bees don't like fire, and I like honey. So yeah, fire. 